Hey guys, Digicide here. By this point, I'm hoping you've seen the Batcave video. This is one of my proudest pieces of work. It took a lot of effort on the build, but it also took a lot of effort in editing. There's a couple of mistakes, like the one right here where it goes black just before it goes in the lift, but other than that. In addition to mods, I've also done some retextures to create the Batman symbol, the comics, the penny, and a few other things. And to answer the question, how did I make the Batmobile move and how did I create the bat signal? I've gone and used After Effects for the first time to create some motion tracking illusions for you. First I want to introduce you to this mod called Place Everywhere by The Lich. This mod completely changed the way that PC users have been building settlements. Before this mod came out we were similar to console users where we had to painstakingly place every single piece of settlement and always trying to nudge it that one tiny little pixel to the side and then it jumps into the snapping process. This mod lets us completely break that. We can now push objects through walls without having to use the rug trip. We can also place objects in mid-air without having to worry about the gravity. You can even move objects that were not meant to be moved in the first place like the roof of this house and we can also scale objects so we can make one item bigger than the other we can make giant trees or we, we can make tiny people this mod allows you to move things within one pixel or change the rotation types and have greater control over the game this is what the mod does it binds these commands to the number keys on your keyboard so we can turn the snapping process on and off the grid process and the work process off this means we can push objects into other objects or we can make them bigger smaller we can rotate the objects not just around the horizontal but around the vertical and around the z-axis as well so we can completely flip objects upside down you're probably going to realize now why i'm mentioning this if you've seen the back cave then you know how i did it this also allows you to change the amount the objects move so if you're trying to move an object a tiny little amount you can push it by just one pixel or you can push it by a hundred pixels completely shifting an object around the room we could do this with console commands that is true but it took a lot of typing as everyone knows and also you get the tremor effect this one allows you to press 5 and then the trimmer goes all the way. So to install this mod it's pretty simple, go to Nexus Mods, go to Files and go to download the latest version. You're going to want to have F for SE installed first. You can download all these files and then once they're downloaded you want to merge them all together into one directory like I already have here. So we have all the DLL files in the same folder but you want to make sure that the latest version is the last one to be copied in so it's got the most modified version of the f 4 sc loader. You want to then put those files into your Fallout 4 directory. You can see I've already done it here and now that's in there we're going to create a shortcut to f 4 se loader. You're probably best putting the shortcut on your desktop because in future if you want to use place everywhere you have to load the game using this f 4 se loader. I also want to show you this one of a mod called All-in-One Batch Files by Killian Anno. This mod is more of a quicker way to access console commands these console commands can be anything from changing the weather, changing the time of day to teleporting companions closer to you. This is easily done by downloading the file manually and copying all the files into your Fallout 4 directory that is the same one as the FOSC files copied into. When you're in game all you have to type is bat then you type them on the commands so if you typed in bat 8 a.m. you could set the game time to 8 o'clock which means you get a nice bright and sunny day. If the weather was then foggy you could type in bat clear. This will change the weather so it's absolutely sunny and clear. This is really useful for when we want to film something. Another one is you could type in bat pg t and what this one will do is teleport you to Preston Garvey or you can type in bat pg that will target Preston for you and then you type in place at me and then Preston Garvey will appear right behind you. So this is a really handy collection of batch files to have. So now I quickly want to show you how I do retexturing. I changed this Brotherhood of Steel helipad into the Batmobiles platform. To do this, I need a few programs. First up is Adobe Photoshop and the NVIDIA Texture Tools plugin so you can open DDS files. Next, you need to go onto Google and download the Bethesda Archive Extractor, NIFScope, and Material Editor. These are three separate tools that will be used individually. With this software installed, we now want to go to the Fallout 4 data directory. Locate Fallout 4 meshes.ba2 and open it in the Bethesda Archive Extractor tool. Then you need to navigate to where your mesh file is. Mine is in the architecture, buildings, barricades, and then you got the Brotherhood of Steel helipad file. I'm going to extract just this one file into a directory I can locate later. And then I'm going to open the NIF file in NIFScope. NIFScope allows you to view the object in a wire mesh format. I can now select the area that I'm interested in, which is the center platform. From here, I can find out which material file is being used. Now we know which BGSM file we need, we can use Bethesda Archive Extractor to extract it from the materials BA2 file in the data directory and put it somewhere we can get at it. Next, we can open this BGSM file in Material Editor. Now, if we go to the Material tab, we can see which DDS files are making up this material. The main texture we're looking for is the one that ends with D. Now we know where this file is, we can go back to Bethesda Archive Extractor and this time go into the 
textures.ba2 file and extract the corresponding DDS file to somewhere we can get at it. As soon as we have that file, we can now open that file in Photoshop and we can begin doing our customization. I'm going to import the bat symbol on top of this and then I'm going to alter some layers so it look a bit more darker. I then have to save this DDS file into the Fallout 4 data directory inside the textures, interiors and then match the same folder path I saw in Material Editor. You can use the same method to retexture anything. Cars are a bit more trickier because they're flat pack, so you have to figure out where each object's going to be when the car's put back together again. Let's take a look at the settlements I used. First up is Croup Manor. This is going to be our pretend way manor for the video. I've changed all the grasses areas to make it look more lush and added some lighting for effect. The manor is based on the rebuilt Croup Manor mod available on Nexus, but I've also changed the interiors too. You see here I've actually decorated it, but I didn't feature this in the video. I swapped out one of the walls at the back of the manor so I could have this secret bookshelf door. This bookshelf then leads into these other doors which were introduced in the Automatron DLC. You can see inside the elevator I'm actually here, this is my mannequin double. This is so I could get some of the angles when I'm going up and down the elevators. I took an entire room to fit all these doors in. If I just take myself out of the way you'll notice that the bat symbol is actually just a sign that I retextured. This is the vault elevator, it's been retextured black so it'll be more fitting. From the outside you can see the elevator goes absolutely nowhere, it is just an effect. Looking underneath the vault elevator we can see there is no gigantic bat cave. There is a void within the world map and using place everywhere we could probably build something but it more than likely glitch. I did consider using the basement but it's surrounded by sand so there was nowhere to build our secret elevator. Switching to daytime you can see how much was changed in the manner to build that scene. In front of the manor I created a rocky area and put a waterfall over the top. This is going to be the cover for the tunnel leading to the bat cave. Later on we will make our effect where the batmobile leaves this cave and appears to come through the waterfall. But if we take a look behind the waterfall, there is nothing there, it is just the back of the rocks. And if we take a close look, there is definitely no bat cave underneath this manor. So now onto the bat cave. The bat cave is pretty big, I mean it's got gigantic cliffs, flowing waterfalls, tons of walkways and lots to see. I'm not sure if you've ever seen any images of the Batcave in the comics. Back in the 1940s, Batman obtained a giant penny from the Penny Plunderer and put it into his trophy room. So as a result, every single one of the Batcave images now features this giant penny. Speaking of coins, here's Harvey Dent's two-sided coin. These were originally a bunch of subway tokens that I retextured, but the amount of the subway tokens caused the game to crash, so I eventually just retextured the comic. Retexturing the comics is very simple. You just open the corresponding DDS file in Photoshop, and then you just drag your cover of Batman onto the front of this one, save it, and then inside the game it becomes that comic. To make the penny, Mike Martin suggested I use a mod called Pipes Galore. Basically I took the top of the pipe, retextured it to be in a penny, changed some more colours in it, and then I got this penny, which has then just been scaled up to be a larger size. I can actually shrink this down to a really tiny one now. Over here there is an oversized Joker playing card, which although there was no backstory, is one of the top three of Batman's Batcave trophies. This is simply a sign that I retextured and scaled up. Time is set to daylight at the moment, but we can use those bat commands from earlier to show you the difference that the lighting can make. In the video, this elevator appears to arrive from the manor above the cave, but actually it just vanishes into this cliff. The waterfalls appear to come from some vast underwater lake, but in actual fact they just come from the landscaping mod and the water is clipping into the cliff pieces. The bat computer is a collection of retextured panels, fuse generators, electrical parts, and of course, a bat symbol. Currently, there isn't an official bat suit mod available, so I have some retexture mods that people have made instead. The suits are being displayed by my mannequin doubles. I even took this Darth Vader suit and put a bat symbol on it in an experiment to make my own bat suit. In the end, I just put a cape on another mod suit. As an easter egg, there's Iron Man's reactor core. Around the cave you don't ever see any wires, that's because I have small reactors hidden under the walkway to provide power. We can take a walk now outside the cave and through this waterfall. Notice there isn't a secluded woods leading to a road here, in fact there's just an ocean. Can you guess where the back cave is yet? Well as an added extra clue, if we go down this walkway that leads to this secluded structure, you may clock onto where we are. Does it help if I move some of these rocks out of the way? So we can switch over to fly cam right now and I'll show you the cave from the outside. There we have it, the bat cave is on Spectacle Island. 
From here, you can see straight through the cliffs. This is because they don't put a texture on the underneath of the cliff object. So when I rotate them round, there's nothing there. The rock pool is from a mod that I scaled up to cover the entire cave. But if I scrap it, you can see the spectacle island beneath. Using place everywhere, I can show you how I flip the cliff pieces to form the roof of the cavern. It's pretty simple, but it can be very time consuming considering how many of these cliff pieces make up the size of this cave. This is where I shot the roof scene. We're on top of the buildings in Hangman's Alley. I used Nick, Preston and Dez for my actors. Nick. Originally, Des was a mannequin, but I wanted her to talk, so I had to pull in the real thing. Switching to fly cam, I can show you around the set. It's only meant to be shot from one angle, so it's not perfect, but it worked for the scene. Over there, you can see the billboard where I shot my lightbox sign tutorial. And of course, if we unfreeze them, I've heard in the road. That's, that's right. Preston wants to give me another settlement quest. Are you surprised why I shot him? Because we've got place everywhere, we can actually move the bits of the building. So we can try to get Preston to go through the floor. Not going to happen. We can tell him to go through the floor. That's better. Got rid of him now. On the roof set, you may have noticed that the spotlight did not have the bat symbol on it. This is because I added it on later in After Effects. After Effects is an industry standard editing tool which applies special effects to video footage. Using After Effects, I was able to create a spotlight coming from the bat signal. The effect is made possible by drawing a white oval and then adding the effect CC Radial Fast Blur. This effect allows you to choose the origin of the light, so you can make the spotlight appear thicker or narrower or longer or shorter. I use the same method on different scenes to create a consistent look. Creating the effect of the bat signal projected against the clouds is a different effect. For this one we have to have a cutout of the bat signal and then have a light source just in front of it. The light source will project the light against the signal and create a shadow effect. Depending where you put the light source will depend what the size of the shadow is going to be. On this particular scene I combined the two methods together to give the effect. In this scene the light was shining over the top of the sign. To get around this you have to create a duplicate layer, use the pen tool and cut out the letters. Those letters will then shine over the top of the light source giving the illusion that the light is coming from behind the sign. In this scene the camera is moving. As a result if I leave the bat signal where it is the bat signal will hover around and jump around the entire set. To get around this, I use motion tracking. The track camera maps all the edges of a scene. This will allow you to map a layer against a surface. In this case, I mapped the bat signal against the spotlight. So as soon as Batman moves through the scene, the bat signal stays in place. And finally, the scene with the Batmobile leaving the cave. Some people think I did it by wearing armor, which looks like the Batmobile. This is not the case. I built a green screen studio. It's above Sanctuary Hills. Using some retextured panels, I put my car here, the mannequin, and I filmed some panning shots on the camera. If we go back onto After Effects, you'll see the completed scene of the car leaving the waterfall and going up the road. Let's freeze in the waterfall scene and break it down into different layers. Here is the car being shot against a green screen in Sanctuary. We can then use key light to remove the green, drop the Croup Manor scene into the background, then adjust the layers to match the lighting, and then a layer mask to add an extra layer to our waterfall. In this scene, we've got a first person view of the car trailing across the road and having an occasional bump. This bit was shot a little bit differently. I made a video from inside the car against the green screen. Using key light, the green screen layer is removed and the car dashboard layer is placed over the top of an earlier video I shot of me walking out of Croup Manor. The car required a little bit extra work. It had a glass windscreen, so I had to create multiple video layers and create a reflective look on the windscreen. I duplicated the outside layer, created a mesh and warped it around the windscreen. I added some noise, made it transparent and also made the car wobble from time to time for more realism. I hope you like the effect. In the future, I hope Fallout do introduce vehicles into the game, but for now, I thought this was a great effect to add to my video. So guys, that's all from behind the scenes of the Batcave. I changed so many textures that I will be reinstalling my game, so we'll not be showing any more from the Batcave. As I film this, Gek is due out next week, so I'm going to have a look into Gek and see if I can make a larger structure using that next time. This video is a little bit longer than I anticipated, but thanks for sticking with me. I hope to see you guys in the next video. See you later.